So as I say, thank you for joining the second webinar. Um, this is, uh, I'll give a brief introduction, and this has been given on behalf of uh, various member, members of the IIA. So Ariadne, Jill, Paul, myself, all of whom have been involved in the, the, the leadership, leadership programme. It's also been given on behalf of the University of Reims, um, the sponsors and the participants in the, in the programme. So the idea of the leadership programme is to develop the, the future leaders for the field. It was initially proposed by Jer Jeremy Bryson and Thomas Ser Serva from IBA, um, but has ev em evolved somewhat over the last two years. So where we are now is that there are three components to it. Uh, there are webinars, which this year were given in March and April, five webinars to introduce the science technology and applications of, of this area. These were mainly for the participants, but were actually open to anybody who wanted to take part. Uh, selected participants were then invited to a face-to-face -face workshop at the University of Rolls, which had in, the, in effect three full days. So there they received more lectures. They heard from the, the, um, the hosts and the sponsors of the, of the programme, and they had some time to work on um, projects uh, proposed by the hosts. So this year we had two hosts, um, two projects, and each one of these hosts had a, a summer placement. So the initial work on the project was done at the face-to-face the -face workshop, and then the two selected candidates will continue to work on these projects during the, um, the placements. We've sort of had two trials of the, the leadership. So Ariadne went to IBA and Ariel last year um, as a trial of, uh, of a placement. Um, she has recorded her experience of this in a video which lasts about 15 minutes and will also be available from the IIA website in the near future. So you can see her thoughts from there. Uh, and then we had the uh, the full programme this year, which wasn't really a trial. It was the first run of the of the full programme with nine participants. Um, so they're all listed here. Uh, the first four you heard from yesterday, the next five you're going to hear from um, today. Uh, we have to thank six different organisations for this. So the five sponsors, uh, Sterogenics, Abbott, IBA, Steris and Nordian, who all provided the funding for the, the programme, and the University of Reims, who hosted the face-to-face uh, the -face workshop. Finally, quickly, we will be running the programme again next year, uh, and we're in the initial stages of doing that. Um, so we're looking for a host some projects. So the hosts need to be willing to to host a, a placement next summer of eight to two, um, 12 weeks and also to propose projects which are of interest to them, but of more general interest to the uh, the whole community. Uh, so these projects could be in areas which are new for for the for the host and potentially um, require skills which the host doesn't already have. And what we plan to do this time is more targeted recruitment of the, the participants. So you will look to at universities which are not too far from the from the host location with um, a good reputation in the subject areas required to carry out the project uh, and do some recruitment for the participants from there and hopefully create a, a link between the, the host and the, the, um, the local university. But we will also do a more international recruitment just to make sure we don't miss uh, miss out on anybody. So if you're interested in being a host for next year, uh, please email me at that address and we can discuss further. Um, and there's more information about the leadership on the the IIA website at the the link that's uh, given at the bottom of this page. Um, so now we move on to the to the first participant from from this year. So that's um, Adrian. So I'm going to hand over now to Adrian, who will tell me when to change the uh, the slides. Okay. Uh, hi, I'm Adrian Ares Blanco. Next slide, Robert, please. 
I'm a research engineer and also a professor from the University Carlos III in Madrid. And besides all of that, I'm a PhD student. My usual place is Spain in my university, but right now, and thanks to the leadership program, I'm in California in the United States carrying out a project with the Abbott Laboratories. And regarding my file of study, this is 3D printing of implants. Uh, next slide, Robert, please. Just for you to know a little bit about me, I would like to tell you a little bit about my career path. Between 2015 and 2019, I did a bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering. And you might be wondering right now, why is a mechanical engineering engineer speaking right now in a conference which is supposed to be about radiation, right? Well, you will see in a minute. After that, I did a master's degree in engineering mechanics in my university. But most important, at that time, I worked also as a research staff, being my field of study, the heat fractures. For example, here you can see a picture of an artificial femur submitted to a compression test. After that, I continued working in the same university as a research engineer. But most important, I decided to start a PhD, which is about my current file of study, 3D printing of implants. And one really good day, my thesis director asked me, Adrian, how do you think can we sterilize our implants? I mean, those implants are made mainly of polylactic acid, and this material cannot withstand neither high temperatures nor high pressures. So how can we do it? And then I started to research and read about other sterilization methods. And I found the sterilization using electron beam radiation. So I decided to keep researching and digging in that file until one good day. Next slide, please. Until a good day in 2022, I started a collaboration with Professor Xavier Cocqueret from the University of Rheim champagne ardennes In this project, we are, and I say we are because this project is still going on, we are studying how the studies how the sterilization using electron beam affects properties in 3D printed polylactic acid. For example, in this picture, you can see a 3D printed sample submitted to a compression, sorry, submitted to a traction test, which has undergone an sterilization process to see how it affects its properties. And finally, and thanks to Professor Xavier Cocqueret in 2023, I participated in the leadership program. And this is the reason why I am speaking right now. Next slide. Just for you to know, in June of this year, this project received a grant from the French Embassy in Spain to found a research stay in France, which I did and I enjoyed so much. Next slide. And now you know me a little bit better, I would like to tell you my interest in the leadership program. The first one are the workshops from top companies and top universities. And the fact is, there is no so much places when you can hear in the same conference on the one hand, professors from top universities, and on the other hand, directors from worldwide companies. I can tell you this is not common and this is absolutely incredible. The second one is the fact to work in real projects related to irradiation. In Reims, back then, I started to work in a project with our pharma Abbott Pharmaceutical Company. And now that I am in, the say, in California working in the same project, I can tell this is a real project with a real world application, which is very important. And finally, uh, I met outstanding people, really. People I met, both participants and both organizers in the leadership program, are people absolutely amazing. And taking all of this into account, next slide. This is what I learned during the leadership program. First, uh, and most obvious one, a lot about irradiation technologies, you know. Um, among many, many others, I learned how to decide between different sterilization techniques, not only focusing in the scientific interest, but also, for example, in the economical interest. The second is how major companies in the irradiation world works. And this is very important. If you want to research file or the things you are doing right now to have an impact in the world, 
uh, you must learn how to transform it into a real world application or into a real world product. And major companies are the ones who are able to tell you how to do that. And finally, of course, the experiences and advices of participants. You know, mm, uh, these participants have, have undergone many situations in which you are probably right now or you will be in the future. So these advices and this experience will help you a lot. In my case, it helps me a lot. Next slide. Uh, usually, in many cases, these kind of experiences change, change people's mind from the future. In my case, on the other hand, it, uh, it has strengthened my decisions or my opinions. For example, in my PhD, Many time ago, sterilization was going to be only a minor chapter in my thesis, and now sterilization is going to be a very important chapter in my thesis with both experimental studies and numerical analysis. Regarding my career path, I always wanted to lead research projects involving both universities and private companies. And now I want to lead research program, research projects sorry, involving both universities and private companies, but while working in a private company, because I really want that the things I am doing, I am researching, I want these ones to be uh, something with a real application in the world, which can help people. And finally, in the most personal way, I always like to work in research projects, but now I know that I love to work in research projects. And just, oh, sorry, next slide. And just to give my feedback and conclusions, here goes my three main points. The first one, the leadership program is an experience 100% recommended, even if your background is not centered in radiation. I can tell you that. The second one is that the program will give you knowledge about irradiation and contact with amazing people. And the last one, and for me, honestly, the most important, all this experience will widen your vision for your professional career. You always are going to need this kind of experience for have a wide vision and help you to take decisions regarding your future. And at the end of the day, for me, again, this is the most important thing. And this is all about my presentation. I really appreciate so much you to hear me. And if someone has any question, I will be quite glad to answer it. Thank you. Thank you, um, Adrian. If you have any questions, then please put them in the Q&A box. You can type them in at, uh, at any time. Uh, we will have a Q&A session um, at the end. Uh, so thank you, Adrian. Now I'd like to hand over to, uh, to Gabriel. OK, thank you, Rob. And thank you, my colleagues, for meeting you once again. And thank you for the opportunity also to let me tell you what has been happening what I learned and my feedback. Um, as most of you will know, my name is Gabriel Kojo Frempon from Ghana. And I work with Ghana Atomic Energy for the past 12 years. Next slide. This is basically going to be the format of how, or the outline of how my presentation will be. Next slide. So what was the, my interest in the leadership program? First of all, after my research or PhD study, um, I was selected as the head of our only radiation facility. And Unfortunately, I wasn't so much abreast with managing a gamma facility. So what I did was to look out for opportunities where I'll be able to learn and get the necessary skills so that I'll be able to manage such a facility. Unfortunately, in Ghana here, there's only one um, nuclear facility and that's where I work. So meaning if I want to look inside for any training, meaning it's my own colleagues that will be assisting me. So I wanted to have an open horizon 
where I'll meet different group of people and have a network. So I was browsing through the net, then I came across this leadership program. Then I applied. The reason why I applied is that I wanted to go beyond the scope I'm operating now. That's to meet people with a common uh, vision. Next slide. What I learned, I learned a couple of things. One of them is um, the use of irradiation in polymer. What I know here is use irradiation in food processing, stem shelf life, have genetic mutation for basically what we do is more of agriculture than any other thing. So my experience and what I learned in France, one of them is how is used, especially when it comes to design, where we were given uh, a takeaway when we visited uh, Prof. Avis lab. Then also I learned about the skin grafting. That's when it comes to health that we were able to use irradiation for sterilization so that skin that will be used for grafting can be sterile before they are transported to the human being. Then other thing that I learned is that we are very familiar with gamma, but when it comes to e-beam, we thought it was also multi-purpose. So, but coming for this program, I realized that each radiator that is designed has a particular purpose and is specific for a particular task. So this I learned and has really helped me, my company or my commission, because we are about to make a very terrible mistake. But when I attended this program and I came back, I was able to advise our board on some of the decisions that we were taking and the implication because here we use our radiator, as I alluded earlier, for agricultural produce to extend shelf life. And we're going for an e-beam of seven um, MEV, which we thought it could work as the gamma facility that we were using. But through a um, presentation from Jerome and Co, I realized that no, if we opted for this one, we will be heading for a disaster. So I came back home and um, that was very helpful. Then also it has helped me in my career path and guidance. I realized that there are a lot of companies out there that are doing something that I am interested in, something that I can also contribute my quota in. Had it not been this um, program, I'm wondering where I would have met such companies to have that personal uh, interaction with them. Next slide. My plans and future impact of the program. Yes, it, it has guided me in uh, my career path. Then also, as I said, we were going to buy EBIM which when I came back from the program, knowing what I learned there, I was able to advise our board, that the, um, our commission board, that the mega vote we are going for and what we are used to doing, using uh, our radar, radar for sorry, we will not be able to use it the way we plan. So the best thing for us was to refurbish our gamma facility and use it, then make room for other irradiators that can be used for specific purposes. Next slide. Feedback and conclusion. My feedback for this is the program is very good. And I think every young person 
goes into irradiation in the irradiation industry or those aspiring to be there should be given the opportunity to attend. However, I want to make some few suggestions that the next organizer um, can improve upon the organization of this program. One, in terms of the timing, because some countries, you it takes a longer time to acquire your visa. Then the funding, at a point in time, I had to um, get funds somewhere to be able to, if people are going to have a partial or full sponsorship, they should be made known so that the person prepares very well. Then I think one difficulty I personally had was the venue from the airports. The venue was too, so next, the next organizer should work around, situate the program close to the airport so that people don't get facility, fa um, people don't get frustrated because of the distance they will have to cover from airports. And if you are going to use a longer distance too, then I think the organization should be such that people should be on the waiting, at the waiting room so that they will help transport the participants to the venue, which I think will be very helpful for whoever will be chosen. However, having said all these uh, difficulties and setback in the first program, I think it's an excellent platform that every individual, when given the opportunity, will be able to learn something useful and meet wonderful people with wonderful ideas that will help our career path. Thank you very much. Thank you, Gabriel, uh, for the feedback and for the suggestions. Um, if you have any questions for, for Gabriel, uh, as for Adrian, put them uh, in the Q&A box on the page. Uh, now, as you can see, it should be time for Emily. But Emily probably can't speak and I can't get back to Teams at the moment. She says she could connect. So I think she's on. Yeah, it's just I have to give her permission to speak. Ah. You all. It's not going so well. Good. So you should now be able to speak and um, use your camera, Emily. Yes. Very good. So I'll go back to the slides, which are there, and go back into full screen. Right. Thank you, Emily. So hi, my name is Emily Gillespie. I am a biomedical science major at Texas A&M University. Um, and right now I work with the National Center for Electron Beam Research under Dr. Suresh Pillai, um, where we study novel applications for electron beam technology. Uh, my work focuses primarily in the microbiology aspect, but we also do work um, with things such as PFAS and also different polymers um, at the lab as well. Um, so that, as I said, I primarily work on projects involving sterilization for food and cosmetic products. Um, and I will be graduating in December with my bachelor's. Um, and then after I graduate um, for the spring semester before graduate school starts, I will be working on a project in Belgium for IBA. Um, 
And then I plan to go to graduate school after that to get my PhD in virology. You can go to the next slide. Um, so my interest in the program uh, primarily came from uh, wanting to network and meet new people, um, as well as learn about the other forms of radiation. At our facility, we primarily just do electron beam radiation, so I didn't have a whole lot of experience with X-ray or gamma, and so I was really interested to learn about those technologies and the things that are being done with those technologies around the world. Um, and I also wanted to learn about what kind of work was going on um, with the other technologies in other labs around the world. Because um, as I said, since we primarily just do um, PFAS and microbiology, I didn't have a, a whole lot of knowledge on all the other things that the technologies can be used for. So I was really interested in finding more information about all the, all the work that's going on around the world. And get the next one. Um, so what I learned during the program was um, about the other irradiation technologies like gamma and X-ray. Um, and I also learned about the, the work going on to develop the technology at the different companies and labs. Um, I was a lot less familiar with work such as the gemstones and other things like that. And so it was really interesting to learn about that. Um, and that that is some of the things that it's uh, some of the applications that they use. Um, and then I also learned about current issues facing the irradiation industries. Um, I had no idea about the cobalt shortage and the issue with uh, obtaining cobalt and all that kind of stuff. And so I didn't know that that was something going on. Um, and so it was really interesting to learn about that and learn how the industry was evolving to compensate for things like that. and changing the way that, that different things work to make things not only more environmentally friendly, but also just more economical and things like that. Um, you can go to the next slide. So my plans for the future is, as I said, attending graduate school to get my PhD in virology. Um, I am Viruses are definitely my passion, so I really want to work with them, but we do have some work going on in the lab about um, like vaccines and other things like that. And I've done a lot of, I've been doing a lot of research in involving um, using irradiation, uh, specifically electron beam for things like vaccines. So I am really interested in potentially getting a job um, after my PhD to work on applications of electron beam technology with viruses specifically in terms of potentially making using it to make vaccines um, as well as um, just other other applications of sterilization and um, inactivation of viruses and different materials. You can get the next slide. Um, so my feedback was I really enjoyed the problem solving aspect of the project that we were assigned. I I love getting those kinds of projects in, in school and everything. And so I, I really enjoyed doing that. That was probably one of the, the highlights of the program for me was getting that, proje that project um, from the company and throughout the learning experience of the program, getting to try to use that knowledge that we were getting to, to try to solve this problem that they presented to us um, and then getting to present that at the end. I found that to be really awesome and I really enjoyed doing that. Um, and then I also really liked the variety of the lectures given to help learn more information about a lot of different topics related to the industry. And I think that was really vital also for the project as well um, to get that wide breadth of knowledge that we can pull from in order to um, properly solve the problem and come up with all the different solutions that are possible. Okay, thank you, Emily. Um, if, as for the others, if you have any questions for Emily, please um, put them in the Q&A session. Uh, so now we move on to Reggiani. Can I hand over you, to you, Reggiani? Good afternoon. 
for everyone. My name is Regiane, I'm from Brazil, and my bachelor are in biomedical science with PhD in nuclear technology, developing research in food radiation field. Also, I'm a carrier in knowledge in other materials irradiated by gamma and neutron beam, concluded at the Energy and Nuclear Research Institute from Brazil in University of Sao Paulo. And then I obtained a specialization in hospital radiopharmacy from Israelita Albert Einstein Hospital. And I come from the job market with 10 years of experience as a medical radiology technician. The next, please. Uh, my motivation for participating in this program was primarily to continue active and updating my knowledge in radiation. Obviously, uh, the network is more important of this. Meet the best professionals and companies in the segment. Uh, living and working in groups with people from different countries and cultures. It was so fun. Next. I learned uh, in this uh, program uh, Revealed basic con uh, concepts first. Né? The lectures was a good chance to remember some things. Uh, new investment by companies, the new products that companies are interested in applying in radiation technology. Uh, some issues to be considered and solved by the industry and the new applications and new research being developed for the university. My plans for the future get a job in radiation industry. It's the first goal now. Maybe start a postdoctoral is a, a other thing that I considered. Change country and leave other cultures and experiences. Uh, to be ref a reference in radiation application uh, and to be like us. Uh, I'm getting a house permit in Italy and uh, I will move there next year i believe it, uh, it will be easier to get a job living in europe and the uh, next my feedback and conclusion about the program is uh, it was a an excellent program with technically important content lectures uh, this program will complement our qualifications through the power of international radiation association and the participating companies the meeting of professionals from different countries and lecture was interesting and fun. Uh, I believe that uh, heterogeneous uh, choice was interesting. In, in our group, we have different, uh, uh, different ages, cultures, uh, areas of training, personalities, and this work is very well toward learning. The next thing. And for finally, I would like to thank all members of the uh, International Radiation Association for all the support and care they gave us throughout the process. Uh, you are great in, 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 all, in all parts of the process. Uh, all the professionals who shared uh, their uh, knowledge with us, the companies that invested in this program and gave us opportunities, and the participants who were partners in everything. I, again, some friends for all life, I think. And I, it was amazing. See you soon. I hope see you soon. Very good. Thanks, Reggiani. So as for the others, if you have any questions, please put them in the Q&A uh, box. Uh, and then we move on to the to the last speaker for today and for the last speaker for these um, uh, webinars, and that's um, Ava. OK, hello, good morning, good afternoon to everybody. Uh, nice to meet you again. My name is Eva Paulak. I work at the National Commission of Atomic Energy from 1996, a long time ago. Uh, I start first uh, four years in application of radiation and after that in 2000 I changed to work at the dosimetry laboratory till now. Next please. Well as 
Many, you know, the content of this presentation is introduction and background, interest in leadership program, what I learned, my plan for the future, feedback and conclusion. Next, please, Rob. Well, I am um, graduated in chemistry at the University of Buenos Aires, Argentina, and also I made an specialization in radiochemistry at the it's in both the technology university, but it was uh, also uh, developing in the National Commission of Atomic Energy. Now, my main activity at the commission is responsible in the area of quality management and high dose dosimetry. Next, please. What we do in the laboratory, our main activities are calibration of routine dosimeter, use it in semi industrial irradiation facility. They are also belongs to National Commission of Atomic Energy, but the laboratory, dosimetry laboratory, is a different department. So I work for them in the routine calibration or in some dose mapping of sample. We also uh, do in the dosimetry of sample that irradiated in the irradiation facility and also in a modular irradiator, gamma cell 220, that now is uh, in a place where they are going to change the source, uh, the gamma source. We also verify the dose and dose mapping of self shield modular gamma irradiator for blood and fly pupa from Mediterranean. There are many hospitals in Argentina that have a blood irradiator with a cesium source. And also there are a two irradiators that were developed by the National Commission of Atomic, Atomic Energy for fly pupa to um, sterilize the, the fly. We also participate, participate in International Dosimetry Laboratory, and uh, we have a project with the agency where our laboratory was referenced for intercomparison exercise. It was from Latin America and Caribbean. Next, please. Well, my special interest in the program was the application of ionization radiation to reduce and reuse polymers disposal. Even I am not a specialist in polymers, I very close to in, in my department with people that work in polymer, food, uh, microbiological application. And they are in the department of polymer very interesting in work in reduce the waste of polymer and I'm going to help with the dosimetry or the radiation. Next please. What I learned in the meeting, uh, interacting with participants and experts from other regions increased my experience as a professional in radiation field. I also uh, saw that electron beam seems to be the best technology in radiation for many applications with less loss of energy and less waste. And the use of irradiation in plastic waste sorting, recycling plastic compatibil co compatibility, modification of the mechanical properties of polymer. Next, please. My plan for the future, I would like to be part of a multi-regional work team, use radiation technology in natural and synthetic polymer for the develop, development of new products with emphasis on waste recovery. And the impact will be orientated in reduced environmental uh, pollution. Next, please, Rob. Feedback and conclusion. I would like to share my knowledge and acquired experience in high dosimetry for gamma radiation. I also would like to collaborate in the next workshop in order to strengthen the relation between different countries that are working with radiation technology. And the leader program is a great opportunity for young people to be part of the company leader in the radiation technology. Next, please. I think the last one. Oh, say thank you to the International Radiation Agency for the opportunity. Uh, and the nice experience I have with all the people and the participants. Thanks. Hope to see you again.
Thank you, Ava. So I will stop sharing now. Hopefully. There we go. Uh, so now it's still we're into the Q and A session. There don't seem to be any at the moment. Um, if you have any questions, then feel free to to ask. If you don't, then we're we're finished for these two webinars. So there don't seem to be any questions coming in at the moment. So I'd just like to thank everybody who took part in the webinar yesterday and the webinar today, the speakers and uh, and the people who listened in. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. I certainly have in if have enjoyed it. And uh, you know, as everybody said, I, you know, as far as uh, the participants are, are concerned, uh, we we should keep in touch, and uh, I hope we'll all meet again uh, in the near future. So thank you everybody for taking part in these webinars. Uh, both of them will be available uh, on the IIA website after some editing to remove the the big the, the big space with nothing at the start and any waffle from me uh, at the end. But uh, so please have a look at them uh, in the in the future. So thank you all again, uh, and uh, everybody keep in touch. Thank you, Rob. Bye. Thank you, Rob. Bye. 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 Bye.